Introduction. Welcome to the Ultimate OET Masterclass. In this session, we'll dive deep into every aspect of the Occupational English Test, OET, a vital step for healthcare professionals aiming to work or study in English-speaking countries. We'll cover everything from the test format and specific skills required for each section, to practical tips, sample responses, and general advice to help you succeed. By the end of this lecture, you'll have a clear roadmap to ace the OET. Let's begin. Section 1. Understanding the OET. What is the OET? Overview. The OET is a specialized English language test for healthcare professionals. It's designed to assess the language skills needed in medical environments, ensuring professionals can communicate effectively and safely with patients and colleagues. Recognized in the UK, Australia, New Zealand, Dubai, Singapore, and other regions. OET test format. Subtests. Listening, 45 minutes tests your ability to understand spoken English in medical contexts. Reading, 60 minutes assesses your ability to read and comprehend healthcare-related texts. Writing, 45 minutes focuses on your ability to write a letter, e.g. referral discharge, based on case notes. Speaking, 20 minutes involves role plays where you act as a healthcare professional in a patient consultation. Scoring, graded from A highest to E lowest with be typically required to pass. Section 2. In-depth look at each OE to subtest listening subtest overview. Format. Part A consultation extracts. Two different consultations, approximately five minutes each. You'll need to fill in the gaps in a set of notes. Part B. Short workplace extracts. Six extracts, each about one minute. You'll answer multiple choice questions. Part C. Presentation extracts, two different recordings about five minutes each. You'll answer multiple choice questions. Tips for listening. Practice active listening. Focus on key information like patient details, diagnoses, and treatment plans. Take notes efficiently. Learn to jot down essential details quickly and clearly during consultations. Familiarize with accents. Listen to a variety of English accents, British, Australian, American, since the OET includes them. Review medical terminology. Ensure you understand common medical terms that may appear in the listening materials. Practice with past papers. This will help you get used to the pace and style of the OET listening tasks. Reading subtest overview format, part A expeditious reading task. You'll be asked to quickly find specific information in a set of four short texts and fill in the blanks, 15 minutes. Part B. Six short workplace extracts, each followed by one multiple choice question, 20 minutes. Part C. Two longer texts with a total of 16 multiple choice questions, 45 minutes. Tips for reading, skim and scan effectively. Develop the ability to quickly locate key information within texts, especially in Part A. Understand the context. Focus on understanding the general meaning of texts rather than translating word for word. Practice time management. Allocate your time wisely. Spend more time on Part C since it is longer and more complex. Improve vocabulary. Familiarize yourself with medical jargon and commonly used terms in healthcare settings. Read widely. Engage with a variety of medical journals, articles, and reports to become comfortable with different types of texts. Writing subtest overview, format, you'll write a letter, usually a referral letter, but it could also be a letter of transfer or discharge, based on case notes provided. Writing sample, sample case notes, patient name, Mr. John Doe DOB, January 1, 1970 diagnosis, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD treatment, regular use of inhaler, Prescribed Pulmacourt. Social history. Smoker for 20 years recently quit. Request. Refer to a respiratory specialist for ongoing management. Sample writing response. Your address. Date. Dear Dr. Smith. Re Mr. John Doe DOB. January 1, 1970 I am writing to refer Mr. John Doe, a 54-year-old male with a diagnosis of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD for further management and evaluation by your clinic. Mr. Doe has been experiencing increasing shortness of breath and frequent exacerbations over the past few months, despite adhering to his prescribed inhaler regimen, 
Pulmacourt. He has a significant history of smoking, which he recently quit after 20 years. Given the progression of his symptoms, I believe that specialist intervention is warranted. I would appreciate your assessment and recommendations for further treatment options, including any potential adjustments to his current medication plan. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Please feel free to contact me for any further information. Yours sincerely. Your name. Your title. Tips for writing. Understand the task. Identify the purpose of the letter, whether it's a referral, discharge, or other type of correspondence. Focus on clarity. Ensure your writing is clear, concise, and well-structured. Avoid unnecessary details that don't add value. Use the case notes effectively. Include all relevant information from the case notes, but don't copy them verbatim. Rephrase and summarize where appropriate. Practice different letter types. Get comfortable with writing various types of letters that may appear on the test. Seek feedback. Have your practice letters reviewed by a tutor or a native English speaker to refine your skills. Speaking subtest overview. Format. The speaking subtest involves two role plays where you will take on the role of a healthcare professional, e.g., a doctor, nurse, pharmacist. The interlocutor will play the role of the patient or caregiver. Model speaking test transcript. Role play one. Context, you are a nurse. A patient, Mr. John, is concerned about his upcoming surgery. Nurse, good morning, Mr. John. How are you feeling today? Patient, I'm really nervous about the surgery tomorrow. What if something goes wrong? Nurse, it's perfectly normal to feel anxious, but rest assured, our surgical team is highly experienced. Let me walk you through the procedure to help ease your concerns. Is that okay? Patient. Yes, please. Nurse. You'll be under general anesthesia, so you won't feel anything during the surgery. The procedure usually takes about two hours, and the surgeon will keep you informed every step of the way. After the surgery, you'll be monitored closely in recovery. Do you have any specific concerns you'd like to discuss? Patient. I'm worried about the pain afterward. Nurse, post-operative pain is common, but we'll manage it effectively with medication. You'll have access to pain relief, and we'll adjust it based on your comfort level. It's important to communicate with us about your pain, so we can help you stay as comfortable as possible. Role play 2. Context, you are a doctor. A patient's caregiver is concerned about managing the patient's diabetes at home. Doctor. Hello, Mrs. Brown. How can I assist you today regarding your husband's diabetes management? Caregiver. I'm worried I'm not doing enough to help him. His blood sugar levels seem so unpredictable. Doctor. Managing diabetes can indeed be challenging, but you're doing a great job by being proactive. Let's review his daily routine and see if we can identify any areas for improvement. Could you walk me through his meals and medication schedule? Caregiver. He eats three meals a day and I try to balance carbs but sometimes his levels spike and I don't know why. Doctor. It sounds like you're on the right track with balanced meals. However, blood sugar can be affected by various factors, including stress, physical activity, and even sleep. We can discuss a more detailed plan to help stabilize his levels. Would you find it helpful if we adjusted his medication or explored different dietary options? Tips for speaking. Practice role plays. Familiarize yourself with the structure of the role play. Practice with a partner, focusing on natural, empathetic communication. Use appropriate language. Tailor your language to suit the patient's level of understanding. Avoid overly technical terms unless you're sure the patient will understand. Demonstrate empathy. Show that you care about the patient's concerns. Use phrases like, I understand how you feel, or it's normal to be worried. Stay focused. Ensure that you address the task fully, covering all required points. Within the time limit, work on pronunciation and fluency. Clear speech and natural fluency are crucial. Record yourself to identify areas for improvement. Section 3. General tips for OET success. Familiarize yourself with the test format. Regularly practice with sample papers to get used to the test's timing, structure, and question types. Focus on medical English. Build a strong vocabulary in medical and healthcare terminology. 
read medical journals, watch healthcare-related documentaries, and engage in discussions with peers. Time management. Learn to manage your time effectively during the test. Practice under timed conditions to build speed and efficiency. Seek feedback and continuous improvement. Regularly seek feedback on your speaking and writing from tutors or peers. Use this feedback to make continuous improvements. Stay calm and confident. Confidence is key. Stay calm during the test, and if you don't know an answer, move on and come back if time allows. Join study groups or forums. Engage with other OET candidates. Share resources, discuss challenges, and exchange tips for better preparation. Conclusion Thank you for participating in this comprehensive OET masterclass. With the right preparation, practice, and mindset, you can achieve your desired score. Remember, the OET is not just a test of your English skills, but your ability to communicate effectively in a healthcare environment. Keep practicing, stay focused, and you'll be well on your way to success. If you found this lecture helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more OET tips, resources, and practice materials. Good luck with your OET journey!